Good morning. It's a beautiful day for a run. Sun is rising. A gentleman just rode by on his bike and said, good job, dude. Keep it up. I love it. Uh, one of my favorite uh, things about the running community is how supportive it is. Supportive of fast runners, of course. We celebrate, you know, everyone. Usain Bolt, Kipchoge, Killian Jordanette. You know, but we also celebrate the person coming in at the end, right? Finishing the marathon and just under the seven hour cutoff for Steamtown, right? Uh, and even slower for New York City, which has no time limit, right? Everybody celebrated with a medal. It's one of my favorite, favorite aspects of running. Doesn't matter your body shape. Uh, yeah. So it's about 23 degrees today. Um, I think it's probably like negative four or five uh, Celsius. I know we got this thing separating us Celsius and Fahrenheit. And some people think uh, one's better than the other. I, I tend to like the one that has more difference. So I like kilometers. I'd rather our roads were in kilometers here in the US, but they're not there in miles because it has more differentiation, right? You have to say like a mile and a half too often. Anytime you have to use halves, you know, that's not a good thing. But then again, that also means I like Fahrenheit better than Celsius because you often have to say, oh, it's like negative 4.3 degrees. You know, you never have to do with decimals in Fahrenheit. But that's my personal preference. Other people like different things, right? Same thing with pounds and kilograms, right? Yeah. So today I'm talking about the accessibility of running. Um, certainly, there was a time in my life when I liked lifting weights better, and definitely when I loved doing karate, and time when I bicycled more, but there's a certain thing to the accessibility of running. You go out to a running store, buy yourself a good pair of daily trainers that are right for your feet, get them checked out, and then you go. You don't even need this running watch I use to keep track of how far. You know, that's all just, uh, you know, personal preference. If you like to keep track, but you just put your shoes on and you go. And that counts for walkers too. There's Pittsburgh. A lot of Blue Jays over there. I don't know if you can see them from this screen. Maybe. The GoPro's pretty good. Lovely. And there's other birds that are singing too. You know. Accessibility. Way to get out into beautiful nature. Pittsburgh Half Marathon has a walkers division too. So it's not just running. When I say running, I mean everything from walking to running locomoting yourself of your own body, your automobile, <laughs> your legs, right? Yeah, it's just very, very accessible. Um, and then you have the uh, wheelchair divisions and the marathons, right? Now, if you can walk a block you know, you want to call yourself a runner, I'm happy. Support you in that, you're a runner. You know, because this is an open community. Everything is acceptable. Whatever your hard accomplishment is, however you accomplish it, and however you're getting better. Because I know whoever you are, and however you get there, you can build up. You know, our local 5K at Black Machinon, you can build up to that. You know, you can do it. And if you don't get there, you're still a runner because you're out there moving yourself. You know, so the wheelchair runners that start off the big marathons like New York and Chicago and Boston and London, 
and South Africa, right? I think that's one, like the next one they're gonna add, add to the uh, marathon majors, not comrades, which is the biggest one there, but something in South Africa probably, because they have a big marathoning culture. You know, Tokyo, you know, all are runners, however you're moving through space. And maybe that's too general to be a good definition, but who cares? We're not doing like definition writing. We're just being open and accessible. That's the best way an exercise should be. You know, no big fancy equipment. You don't have to buy a $5,000 triathlon bike to do this. You don't have to buy a canoe. You don't have to buy cross country gear. You can do it all year round. You don't have to wait for the snowpack to be just right. You don't have to be, wait for the weather to be warm enough. Well, maybe you do in Canada. <laughs> but anyway, Canadians are a little tougher anyway, right? They get out there at like big negative temperatures. And not to, you know, just south of Minnesota. They make them pretty tough too, right? And uh, North Dakota. Yeah, but here in Pennsylvania, you know, we had a couple days where I didn't go out when we had like negative 19 wind chill and stuff like that. And just didn't go out, you know, and went out a couple days later. Yeah. So what do you think? What is the most accessible form of exercise for human beings? Is it running? Am I right? And which is the most open, positive community? I get so many positive comments. That's why I vlog about this. It's not like I make money off YouTube, you know? It's just vlogging what I'm doing, keeping myself accountable, keeping myself in shape, and getting better how I can. When I run, I'm like a child holding his mother's arms. <laughs> <laughs>